Hello, my name is Renessa Smith. I am the founder and minister of Evangelistic Crusade Ministries. I would like to take a few moments of your time, my black beautiful sisters and my wonderful black brothers, black people. I need to talk to you about something that maybe like me years ago, you didn't think would be so crucial and so important as it pertains to our money and how it's spent in our black communities. I wanna start off my presentation with the topic, sisters, brothers, are you aware of the cost of hair? I repeat, are you aware as it pertains to counting up the cost we as black people, what we are really paying when we buy from non-black hair supply stores and nail salons? I'm gonna ask you a question. In many of these questions I thought so, so long about because it really is about our future our children, our children's children, but it's about now. And I hope I have your most humble, undivided attention. Did you know that we're losing billions of dollars in the non-Black communities as it pertains to hair, cosmetic, and skincare? Listen to that number, $10 billion. It is estimated that we, us, beautiful black women, we spend $10 billion annually on hair, supplies, cosmetics, and skincare. So that speaks volumes to how we care about our look. But this is not so much about what you're buying. This very important presentation is about every time we buy with an annual amount totaling $10 billion, I regret to inform you, those monies spent, we do not reap one dime in the African American community. Just think about that. Every time we're striving to look good and we know how that we do not profit in our black communities. So stop and take a moment and think about who our black communities are. Our black community, our people who perhaps wanna have a business or have a business. And unfortunately, the numbers are extremely low of our support buying from our own. Did you know that when black women shop, pardon me, in non-black hair supply stores and nail salons that were disrespected, did you know that black women are viewed from non-black store owners, as thieves, shoplifters. Several months ago in North Carolina, there was a woman, a black woman, who was accused of shoplifting. The non-black store owner grabbed her, tackled her to the ground, and placed her in a chokehold. If that's not enough, there was another incident that was very disturbing, where the black woman had a question or there was some dispute about a product. And that led to the non-black store owner punching her in the face in front of her children. I am a mother and I am very sure that I'm speaking to a lot of mothers, aunts, 
sisters, and yes, brothers, who should be appalled by that. No one should disrespect a person where they physically assault them and attack them because they assume, because their skin is black, that they're stealing out of their store. When in reality, they're stealing from us. My black sisters and brothers, unfortunately, I say this with regret, we are allowing it to happen. We need to be aware that we vote with our dollars, meaning we can vote who comes in our community and we can vote with our dollars who comes out. So I like a saying that Sojourner Truth once said when they said women couldn't have rights. And she said, after they made the statement, well, why should a woman have rights? After all, look at Eve. She turned this word up, world upside down. And Sojourner Truth, a former slave, responded in boldness and said, well, if a woman turned this world upside down, then a woman can turn it right side up. And that's what I'm asking you, my sisters and my brothers, to really take this seriously, that we can control our dollars in our black communities. Before I say any further, I just have my notes because I don't wanna leave out anything. The other thing that I wanna share with you, if you have children, the worst feeling in some instances for children is that they're picked on, they're teased, they're labeled, they're called names, and it affects them. Well, I have learned that there's a nickname from other non-Black owners in the industry that they have about Black people. And they have stated that Black people are liquidated money. So think about that every time you go into a non-black hair supply store and you got to have those special deals that they offer you where you got to have that hair. That even for some of you who say, well, you know, I've been going to such and such for a long time and 20 years and they give you that smile and I've never been assaulted or I'm not disrespected. Oh, my friend, you have to look at the blueprint. They are laughing because of the fact that the monies that you're spending is not being recuperated in our community. And they leave out of the communities with our dollars because we want the hair so bad, we want the product so bad, we want the cosmetics so bad. And they drive off in their Bentleys while we come back to struggle to a black community of crime, drugs, and violence. So this is very, very serious that we really see the true picture, the true cost when we purchase through non-black hair supply stores and nail salons. Well, I have some good news. You know, I think about many of our churches and I've been brought up in the church all my life. And I have seen the ups and downs that the churches go through Many times, the church, when we look at all that's going on in our community, remains in the community, in the midst of the hustle, the bustle, the rough times, the good times, the crime and the drugs and the violence. The church stays standing. Well, guess what? The church was a very powerful vehicle or catalyst during the civil rights movement. When the death of Emmett Till happened, Rosa Parks did not only just refuse to give up her seat because a white man asked her or told her she had to get up, pardon me, but she was thinking about Emmett Till, a young little black boy, 14 years old, didn't even know Rosa Parks and didn't even know that his gruesome, 
horrible tragedy. Taking of his life would stir a woman by the name of Rosa Parks to start one of the most powerful civil rights movements in history. Well, what did they do? The black folks came together and they said, if we got to sit at the back of the bus, we'll walk. Well, guess what, my friends? You may be saying, what does that have to do with the hair care? It has everything to do with your civil rights. Everything. That when we go into our churches, that place of light, that place where true leaders stand up and declare the word of God, this is very much a part of it. To let you know, you don't have to pay billions and billions of our dollars into someone else's community because they have chosen to set up shop in black communities and then turn around behind our backs and say, black is liquidated money. Well, guess what? I'm reminded in the scriptures as a minister, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But my dear beloveds, and I call you dear beloveds, the scripture also says, we're destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Well, I'm here to take care of the lack and inform you that we have the power and the authority to gather the people of God in our place of worship. That's what they did when they mobilized and formed the civil rights movement. They were in the house of God and they made a difference because here we are today. But guess what? It's time that we take a stand and control our dollars. The hair industry business is a big billion, multi-dollar, million dollar business. And we're not reaping from it. They're buying and selling us and we're allowing it. You know, back to the story about the woman who was just asking a simple question with a product that led to a dispute in the non-black owned store who was punched in the face in front of her children. You know what was very sad about that? To make amends, the store owner opened up his store the very next day and offered 50% off of everything. And there was a group, I say a group of black women at the door to take advantage of that sale. What about the woman, your sister, who was punched in the face in front of her children and traumatized, and you still want their product? No, 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 my sister. I'm gonna say like Malcolm X said, we've been had. We've been hoodwinked. We've been bamboozled. But guess what? We're smarter than that. That we would put a product from someone who don't even like us when we come to the door, but love our green. That we would put their product before the life of another black woman who was uh, assaulted. We cannot allow this to continue. We must come together and do what I know that we do best that we can do right as Christians, as women of God, no matter where you're from. We have our own black businesses. And let me just po uh, pause here. Some of you I do understand that there is that challenge of perhaps you're in a town or a city and there aren't that many black owned hair supply stores. Well, I want you to know if you would just give a little more time and patience that as we speak right now, I've gotten together entrepreneurs who are in the hair industry, business owners, and we are coming together to fix that problem. Just think if I can have the attention of pastors in our churches, our black pastors, can't nobody do hair like the sisters. Let's, let's start right there. The sisters can do hair, makeup, and a lot of our brothers have been gifted to do the art of makeup and hair. Can't nobody do it. 
like black folks. Our hairs, our cornrow style. And God has blessed us. Great black pastors. Has it ever dawned on you that you have business owners in your congregation sitting in your midst? Well, we can begin to empower them encourage them to open their own business. There's an outstanding CEO founder by the name of Mr. Sam Ennin. He's out in Los Angeles, a part of our team in this project of bringing awareness so that we control our dollars. And if you go to his website, he can provide you with so much information that will help you start your own business, your own black hair supply store and begin to be the answer so that we don't have to continue to drain our money being consumers in black hair supply and nail salons that hate the very presence of our face. If I can pause for a moment and share, I've been going to black hair supply stores for probably since the 80s. Dear hearts, I think it's very sad. My own personal experience. No, I've never been tackled, but I've never been welcomed in a non-black hair supply store or nail salon. I would hear uh, behind my back in a nail salon store, in my spirit, you can discern when people are saying ugly things about you because you can sense warmness when you're in the room. God has given us common sense. And I thought I'm giving my business to someone who's probably giving me a pedicure, giving me a manicure, and just saying awful things about me as a person who harms no one, who's kind to all, thought enough of you, regardless of your race, to give you my business, but yet you're sucking our communities dry and disrespecting us, putting hands on us like we're animals and we're thieves. Well, dear beloveds, my black sisters and brothers, that was the day the light bulb came on to me because I don't have to give my money to people who don't like me, don't like the color of my skin and the way I look, no. It doesn't work that way. God has called us to be the head and not the tail. Right now, we've been the tail in this hair supply and nail and cosmetics industry. I remember something that Barack Obama said, and I'm gonna share it with you. Change has come to the black community. And I'm putting the word out and ask that you would join me, that we, for a start, are going to support Black-owned businesses. Many of our Black sisters, and you've encouraged me, thank you, are going natural, where we don't always have to be hungry for the hair and give up our respect and our dignity to buy hair in a shop with Black owners, pardon me, with non-Black owners who walk away with our money and empower their community and treat us like dogs, worse than dogs. So it's very important that you really absorb everything that I'm sharing about the hair, supply stores, and nail salon industries. Just go on the internet, go to YouTube and pull up the many black women who feel they're disrespected. Well, my sisters, as I said earlier, when Sojourner Truth was told a woman has turned this world right side, upside down, and she said, we can turn it right side up. Aren't you tired of people making money off of us? And let me just share something with our black pastors. I'm a tither and an orphan giver. I've seen the power of God move in my mind, pardon me, my, my life, sowing tithe and offering. 
because I love God and I want my church to be able to stand and be a powerful light in the community of young black boys and girls and widow, uh, black widow and widowers and, and reach out to the hungry and the naked and clothe them. That is my calling. So I sow my tithe and offering and hold the leadership to their commitment to be accountable for those monies and bless and be a blessing to our community. But you know what? Here's one reason why so many struggle so in tithe and offerings, because we're being consumers. And a lot of these non-black owned businesses where we drag ourselves to church and we don't have enough money to sow into the very God who's willing and ready to bless us. And I would love for the pastors to really think about these statements. Think about how all this money, because let's face it, the church is full of women. So therefore the women are the gatekeepers to the house of God. And they work hard and we serve hard, but our money is being drained and exhausted into other communities that do not reflect us, that do not look like us. We can turn that around great men and women of God who serve in pastoral leadership. I'm of the fivefold. And I understand that we can do all things, come on here, through Christ that strengthen us. Well, I've been strengthened for this project. And I believe if you would just join in commitment, it's very simple. Tell all the sisters in your congregation after you have preached the word of God that I got another blessing for you. How many of you all shop in black owned today when it comes to hair supply stores and nail salons? How many? How many are looking to find one in your location? If not, this woman of God said we can do something about it. We must build Black Wall Street. We must realize Madam C.J. Walker, she struggled and started with only $2 and she died a wealthy woman in the hair product business. Well, guess what? She's dropped that mantle and I'm taking a commitment to pick it up and say no one's going to keep selling us and robbing from us. Many of us, we go to powerful church conventions. Women, we know how to pack it out and do conference. Well, let's pack this out and say, oh, no, y'all not going to label us as liquidated Black people money. It's no different than saying that we're stupid. Well, let me say this. We must get involved and act now and control our dollars. As I begin to wrap it up, I'm starting a project that's called the Boss Tour. And what the Boss Tour is, every woman and every state becomes a boss leader. And she gathers a group of friends, co-workers, to do what's called group shopping. Group shopping in Black-owned hair supply stores. Did you not know that Black-owned hair supply pliers are discriminated, discriminated against when it comes to buying the hair? And then we complain and we say, oh, their price is too high. Well, we're going to have to sacrifice because I'm so happy that I'm a part and a customer of a Black-owned store in Atlanta. It's called Atlanta Beauty Depot on Cobb Parkway in Smyrna, Georgia. Those of you in the area, let's shop. I do know we are aware. We are in 
a pandemic. So I encourage you, wear your mask, be safe, know what the social distant policies are in those stores. If you, let's say if you had 10 people, well go in by twos or go in by threes. Let's start making change. Well, I'm hoping that once we launch the boss tour, that people will be able to post who they are as the boss leader of your group, the town and city, and the name of the hair supply store or nail salon, black that is, that you have supported and posted on social media. I'm preparing a website where everyone can join what I call I'm the boss movement. I'm the boss movement means I am committed to shopping black owned when it comes to hair care cosmetics. I will look and search for my own and build and reclaim and rescue our $10 billion. It has been declared that within 2020, black people will have $1.3 trillion of spending money. Dearly beloveds, my people, we can't lose that. We have black pastors who are ministering the word of God, giving their all in all in our communities. We have, uh, many of us don't even own a black gas station. Let's build, join. If you are interested in being supportive, for now, I will provide for you the email address W-I-N-N-I-F-I-N-E 50 at gmail.com. I repeat, Winnie Fine, W-I-N-N-I-E F-I-N-E 50 at gmail.com. Let us know that you're ready to support. Black pastors, we need you. We need you because you are the voice to bring this voice message to all the sisters that sit in our congregations, the sisters that I minister to as well, to shop black owned when it comes to hair, supply, and skincare and cosmetics. And just in general, we have black owned credit unions, black owned people in real estate, black owned barbershops. Let's do this. We don't have to be struggling and asking somebody to help us and build our communities. We can do it ourselves. We are rich people from Africa, Caribbeans, great motherlands, rich, full of gold. We're ready to take back what the enemy stole. I close with this. I'm very excited about a Zoom that I'm going to be organizing and it's titled Black Pastors save black wealth. And I'm looking forward to uh, one of the pastors that we have confirmed and who are open to have the discussion about what we can do. If you are a black pastor and you wanna be a part of changing the community and saving our wealth, so you don't have to struggle. So we don't have to struggle. Our community, our children, our children's children don't have to struggle. What do you think it would look like? Oh, well, let me add this in. The non-black hair supply stores, they're talking to other ethnic groups and races and telling them it's liquidated money. And they're ready to come in and cash in on us. We can't continue to let this happen. We can't. Because next thing you know, we'll be going into grocery stores of different places in our communities that don't look like us, don't talk like us, and telling us what we can and cannot buy. And raising the prices, that's slavery. Let's not let that happen in 2020. So I'm asking the pastors, I'm gonna host a Zoom. And once everyone is confirmed, I would love for you to be a part of the discussion and a part of the answer, because you are. I thank you so much for setting time to join this conversation about Black hair dollars matter, because they do. It's time, sisters. 
This is our time, right in a pandemic, our money, our wealth to get back what the enemy stole. Again, that email is Winnie Fine, W-I-N-N-I-E-F-I-N-E 50 uh, at gmail, pardon me, dot com. I thank you so much. And don't forget, right now, let's shop when it comes to hair, the hair supply, stores, and nail salons. Let's shop black on. God bless you and may you forever be safe and forever be blessed. Thank you. <laughs>